Many people uh, often ask me when I say that it's uh, your gut that will lead you out of a dangerous, emotionally abusive or toxic situation, not your head. The question I get a lot is, well, how do I know what my gut is and what my head is? And how can I begin to listen to my instincts, my gut, my spirit over my head? And I think those are great questions. And I would say this about that. Number one, your head is where all the trouble lives because that's where the lies that you've been told stay. Okay, Your instincts, your gut, your spirit gives you information that you can't prove. But when you're in a dangerous environment, one of the things that is required is for you to explain everything and to have a reason for everything and to justify it because the person you're with is always trying to avoid responsibility and putting it back on you. So practically speaking, you're in a conversation with someone and you, your gut, it usually comes from somewhere in here, not, not, not intellectually, goes, oh, that doesn't seem right. But you don't have a, a way to prove that. You just know it's not right. So then to take the step of following that means you have to step into the unknown. And when you're in a dangerous environment emotionally or physically, it seems like the exact wrong thing to do to take the step into the unknown. You want to be aware. And this is also why those of us that have been in emotionally abusive or uh, abusive relationships or abusive environments like when I was a child, we we tend to always be wanting to be prepared because we're always trying to we're in that fight or flight uh, uh, mindset. We're trying to prepare ourselves for not being harmed. So it feels very um, counterintuitive to without evidence step into something. OK, and this is why I keep saying to people, but you trusting that instinct, your spirit, your gut is what's going to lead you to being in a clear reality rather than one that's all confused. So you are in a conversation, your gut says, mm, that's not true. And instead of trying to figure it out or justify it, you just take that step. And here's the thing. Let's say you have 10 opportunities in a given day and you take one. Yes, we're moving in the right direction, but you're never going to take 10 out of 10, even on your best day. It's just, this is not how humans work. So if you can just pay attention to that and listen, depending on the safety level that you have, depending on your tolerance for risk, depending on how much energy you have, which is all very important because those things matter to whether or not you can do it. So take, take very small, maybe the less consequential versions of those opportunities. Like, you know, if somebody says something and you think they're lying or they're misrepresenting it, you say, oh, okay and move along, but you don't buy in. That might be one way to tr trust that instead of engaging in it and trying to get them to own it. And But your gut is telling you and you're like, you go jot it down like they said this and I don't believe it and here's why. And then in six minutes or six weeks when it's all revealed, you're like, oh yeah, I have this. And this is the other reason why I really encourage people to document what their gut is saying instead of their head. Because you'll, you'll find out later, it'll give you... Um, uh, confidence and it'll it'll validate oh that's exactly right i did see that but when you're in a survival mentality and you're trying not to get hurt we we forget a lot of stuff suppression is how we survive harm if you're in a dangerous environment you are going to deny you are going to suppress it's how we survive you must build a healthy denial structure to survive and denial is mental it's intellectual it's not solic. It's not, it's not here. So this is why it's so important that you trust your instincts. And again, this is a very nuanced thing. So that's why there's not a five-step plan to trusting your instincts because it doesn't work that way. And all the people that are saying that are probably selling you something. It's, and it's very individual to the person's context and to how much strength and assets they have and what kind of support they have, what kind of trauma history they have, how intense the danger is. So this is why I really encourage people to document so you can start to get clear and then you follow those instincts, not all the lies in your head. And then remember, if you're in an emotionally abusive relationship, the person you're in the relationship with is lying to you and telling you you're the problem. And if you keep rehearsing that, it's going to keep you stuck. So I just want to encourage you, trust your instincts in, in today's, just today. If you get five chances, just take one. And that's going to move us in the direction of health. There's nothing wrong with you. You might have problems, 
but you are not the problem. And if somebody is telling you that, that's another sign that they're trying to harm you. So I would encourage you to take one opportunity that you can and move just a little bit forward. Because remember, transformation, change is never an event. It's always a process. And that's how you get down the road is by trusting that instinct as much as you possibly can. And every time you do, let's celebrate. Let's not dislocate our hip to kick ourselves in the rear over what we're not doing. Let's celebrate what small victories we're having because that's what will lead us to health and safety.